Hey everyone, welcome to Philip in the Cloud. This is another episode where we're going to be talking about IBIS. And today, I'm going to be showing off a bunch of really awesome features that are coming in in the next release of IBIS 5.0. And we're going to see how we can get super productive with a, a new feature called selectors. I'll show a little bit of the new examples API, which allows you to get up and running with some data without having to take a look, uh, without having to know how to use the, the file reader APIs. All right, so with that, uh, let's just let's just jump into it. Uh, one thing that sort of, I guess, came out of uh, me making these live streams is uh, I kept having to type the same, like, kind of interactive things over and over again. So we have a new namespace called uh, interactive and you can import star um, and that will turn on interactive mode and give you a couple of aliases that make working with uh, that make doing interactive data analysis a lot easier so let's import that and you have this examples module now which is a new feature in 5.0 and that has uh, a ton of of data examples to mess around with um, for the purposes of this stream, we're going to be looking at the Penguin, the Palmer Penguins data set. Um, I'll post a link to that in the description, um, and you can kind of you can kind of access it, and it will give you a description of it, and also like the 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 file name that will ultimately be downloaded. And the way you, there's only one method on these objects, and it's called fetch. And what that does is it will pull down the data from a bucket. Uh, and uh, we'll stick it in a cache directory uh, on your hard disk and then um, the next time you call fetch it'll pull the cached um, the cached file from disk instead of reading it from cloud storage again interactive mode is on so we immediately see the rich table wrapper and we've got some columns uh, that are uh, basically some details about um, the penguins, like what species they are, what island they live on, bill length, bill depth, the length of their flippers, how big their bodies are, their sex, and uh, I'm not sure what year is. I think it's the year in which they recorded the data. So one one interesting thing, uh, another feature that we've we've added is is called selectors, and traditionally it's actually been pretty difficult to like select. Uh, to apply an operation to multiple columns in IBIS, you typically had to do something like a list comprehension. So you would say, you know, um, let's say, let's say we wanted to take the average of all the numeric columns. So we'd say something like, um, you know, select, and then we'd say um, T C. Um, actually, we'd say I guess we'd say AG, and we'd say T C mean uh, for C and T dot columns and it's like well that's uh, not going to work because I can't write Python but that's not going to work because we don't we, our string column doesn't have a, a mean attribute right we can't take the average of a string column so now we have to like filter based on the type right and it's like okay well what does that API look like and it's like okay well, we've got to do this and then we get the type, and then we have to say like, is, you know, is numeric, and it's like, well, I still um, haven't learned to write Python apparently. So okay, so now we got it, right? We had to, but we had to kind of come up with this like really long, you know, uh, uh, expression here. And it's like, well, what if we wanted to extend that? And we wanted to say we wanted to do like a like a select, but like we wanted to take the at, like we wanted to like subtract the mean from that and it's like okay well now we can do that but we've got this like not great naming convention um, or not great automatically generated names and like what if I want to like roll those back into like the original you know data set well it's like now I gotta make a list I gotta like put in you know t dot columns here and it's like okay they're there I can't really see them that's because I'm I'm got my terminal zoomed in but it's like, okay, well, what if I just wanted to see the columns that I just created? It's like, well, okay, now I have to, like, remember what the, 
name is called based on the operation. It's just it's just a freaking mess. Um, and so selectors are designed to reduce the mess, like basically make it easy and comfortable and nice to to do operations like this. So let's let's just take this operation and write it in terms of a selector. So we're going to take all the numeric columns and we're going to subtract the mean um, and we're just going to kind of we're going to update uh, the existing columns sort of in place and things are not actually going to be updated in place you're just going to get a new expression that has uh, basically replaced the numeric columns with their uh, mean centered values so what does that look like selectors all live under the selectors namespace um, but we've imported from Interactive, so we got this S module. And there's a bunch of stuff in here, and we'll go through some of them here in a bit. So we're going to use the mutate API, and then we're going to say, um, give me all the numeric columns. Sorry, we're going to say s.across. And what across is going to do is actually going to apply uh, the, the function specified in the second argument. Uh, to the selector specified in the first. So we can say s dot across, and we can say s numeric, um, and then we can say dot mean, we could say um, underscore, and then we can correctly close our parentheses. And now you can see we've got all of our numeric columns now have been mean centered. Um, so that's pretty nice, right? We didn't have no list comprehensions. We can kind of just express exactly what we want and what we want it to what we want to uh, apply that that function to uh, the kind of the category of columns, like all numeric columns. So let's 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 go a little bit further and and say, okay, well, like let's let's like let's just like turn this into a proper z-score, and we can kind of do that too, right? But like. What's going on with the year column? This is this looks a little suspicious. Like, what the heck is the year negative one point two five? And that doesn't actually sound like a year. So of course, selectors will let you exclude that pretty easily, right? We've got the C uh, selector, which basically is just a variadic function that accepts um, strings as arguments and specifies a column. Um, but it's written in terms of a of a predicate, like a, a function that returns a boolean. So you can actually use the tilde to negate that. And so the way to read this selector, this bit here, I'll highlight it. We say s. We, we say, give me all the numeric columns, but not the column whose name is year. And so great, we've applied our z-score now to. Uh, only the columns that where we think a z-score is meaningful, which is the bill length, depth, flipper length, and the body mass. So that's pretty neat. Um, we've we've sort of addressed that bizarro year issue. <clears throat> now, what if you want to? So we're applying this function across um, all values of species, island, and sex, and we may want to actually just look at one or all or a subset of those three columns. And the way you typically do this is with a group by, and the way you, tip, you do this with selectors is actually no different. You just slap a group by on there. In this case, we're grouping by species. And we do the, and we, we basically have, we've got, that, we've got that computation. So now for each species, we're computing the z-score for uh, the, the numeric columns, you know, minus the year column. And anything that's sort of available uh, in kind of like a place where you might call select, you can use uh, this underscore operator uh, to, to apply functions. So let's take the case of something like min-max normalization where we want to kind of cap the value between 0 and 1. We can say, we can say this. And, and the interesting thing here is that all of this is happening um, in SQL. We're, all the execution is happening in SQL. We're spelling this out in IBIS, it's generating SQL, and then it's going to the back end. So you can leverage that, that speed and the data locality of the back end um, while having the flexibility of Python. It's pretty great. 
And so now we've we've done the min max normalization, but we've actually done it by group. That's pretty neat. Like I'm not sure how you would express this in pandas. I think you might have to use transform and like apply and probably a lambda function. Uh, but with ibis, we're actually there's none of that. None of that is necessary, and you get the speed of whatever backend you're using. In this case, I'm using the DuckDB backend, so things are rather snappy. And you're not limited to aggregation functions. Uh, like I said, you can apply uh, across, you can pass kind of any anything that's going to operate on a column to this second argument. Um, so let's say we wanted to, for whatever reason, cast all of the um, you know functions of these numerics again, and and let's let's use a different selector to select our our numeric columns, so we don't have to keep dealing with this pesky ear columns. Ibis actually has uh, some some more selectors like ends with and starts with and contains, where you can actually select a subset of columns based on some string property of the name, right? So in this case, we're going to say, give me all, and they and the selectors look like. The, the the string methods of, of the same name they have the same signature so they take either a single uh, string argument or they take like a tuple of strings and so you can say like uh, we want you know the things the, the the columns that kind of end in you know underscore mm and then the one that ends in G and then um, let's say we want to we want to downcast those to float 32s for whatever reason boom we've got that now you can see, up in whoops, and now you can see up in the the types of these guys that they're float 32 here, and our computation has done what we asked. Another thing uh, we've done this grouped, which is not actually necessary because um, the cast operation is no different whether you've done it on a group or not. Um, so we we would probably just do it like that. Another thing you may want to do is take all the string columns and um, kind of normalize them by case. We see that we have our species column, which has maybe title case, um, and then island is also appears to be title case, and then the sex column is showing all lowercase. So let's actually select out those columns and, uh, and, and just lowercase them all. So our function is, is literally just going to be um, dot lower because that's the, the, the function that does the column function that does this. And then for our selector, we're probably going to say some we want we want to use the of type selector, which says like select all the columns that have a particular type. And this is a flexible API. You can give it a string that has the type. You could say in64. Um, if you want to be uh, more generic, you can kind of use the the, 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 the um, the data types module classes, and you can say show me all arrays, or you could say show me all arrays that are uh, strings, you know that sort of thing. Um, but for now, we're just going to say give me all the the strings here, the string columns, and then call lower on it. And you can see that the lower uh, function was called on species island and sex doesn't have any effect on the sex column because it's already lowercase. But the other two, as you can see. Uh, we're, we're lower cased. Um, so that's kind of like, that's kind of selectors. And then like, you can start to get into some, some pretty powerful, powerful stuff. You can say, like, w let's say you wanted to, uh, you know, of course you can chain these, right? So I could do a select, a selector computation here and then do another one and kind of chain them to your heart's content. Um, but you can also, you can also do multiple, multiple operations. So Let's go back to um, let's go back to this selection, and let's actually let's let's say we wanted to look we wanted to like get columns that have we wanted to compute the z-score and the mean-centered values as like two distinct uh, computations. So the way you do this is it, it's kind of heavily inspired by dplyr, and what you what you actually do is you give a dictionary where the keys are going to be a suffix added to the the column that the function is being applied to and the value is the function or the expression that you're going to apply this to. So we'll call this centered and we'll say this is underscore minus underscore dot mean and yeah the underscore kind of looks like a uh, like some kind of uh, emoji art um, so that's fun and then we're gonna apply the 
the z-score where we have the column minus the mean and then we divide by the column's standard deviation. And the expression is getting pretty big because uh, my, my uh, my terminal is zoomed in, so you may not be able to see the, 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 the expression here, but it'll show up after I hit return. And uh, I, have, I have the iPod on, iPod on auto formatting turned on. Um, so you can see there that we got our, our computation. And now I'll, I'll assign this to an expression so that we can poke around the columns a bit. Um, and you can see that we've got these new columns where the original column name is suffixed with underscore the key of the dictionary, right? So we've, we've sort of applied, we've sort of done like a nested loop where he said for every function, uh, you know, apply that function and then also like attach this name at the end. Um, so, if we, so of course, like with selectors, now we can say um, select and then let's say we just wanted to inspect those, the values for the centers and the Z scores like uh, 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 to make sure that they look reasonable. So of course we can say ends with um, you know centered and z score and boom we've got our columns there and let's just let's just say z score alone here to make sure things look sane there cool we've got all our columns and they look fairly reasonable now in the real world today you probably want to have some checks here. Um, but uh, we're demoing here for now. Um, so that's kind of, we've been doing a lot of mutate uh, uh, usage, but selectors also, they work with aggregates. So let's say we wanted to group by the year column and take the aggregation across, um, uh, let's see, we wanted, to, we wanted to take the mean of um, all the numeric columns, uh, you know, minus the year. So you would say S numeric, you know, uh, this again, S, oops, C year. We've got our across, and then we would say mean. Boom. We kept the column names the same. We took the mean, we grouped by year, and we didn't have to like futz around with list, list comprehensions or anything like that too. Now, We've been uh, we've been mainly applying selectors to to at, to sort of like methods that will do some kind of you know compute on the data, but you can also apply uh, you can apply selectors uh, in most places that you can kind of select columns out. So of course group by is like no different. So let's say we wanted to group by every column that's not numeric, so species, island, and sex. Um, or year, so that's going to include four grouping columns, right? And then we can compute the mean over all those, um, uh, over all the numeric columns with uh, those four grouping keys. So in this case, we'd say s dot numeric or s dot c year, which is pretty nice, right? We, we know. We know that the the sort of logical negation of this grouping key is going to give us all the things we want to aggregate. And and if you you know if you if you really want what you can actually let, let's just try this actually. So um, I actually this is like not part of the original plan, but let's see how it goes. So let's say I have s numeric and s dot c year, and I just I just sign this to cell for selector, and then I say t group by uh, so the so cell is like all the columns that I actually want to aggregate, but the logical negation of that this is really showing off like the the composability of selectors. Logical negation of that is a thing I want to group by. So then I can say s across, oops, across, s uh, cell, and then I can say let's just take the mean again. Boom! Now I've got that, which is pretty sweet. I've got you know. You know, so you can kind of see there's like a, a triple here of, uh, you know, of basically all the, uh, you know, the numeric columns minus the year grouped by all the things that we might want to group by. So we can see, you know, the Adelie species on the Tor Torgerson Island males in 2007. And we can, we can kind of do that pretty naturally with selectors. 
And the uh, the final kind of thing I wanted to show uh, is that you can um, there's a, there are also filtering selectors again inspired by dplyr. Um, so you can you can say like let's say you wanted to uh, you know keep rows where all the bill size z score related columns absolute values are greater than two. I I know that's a mouthful. Um, there's a blog on this. Uh, I link to it in the description and you can kind of work through it at your own pace. Um, so the way, but the way you might do that is you first, you know, let's, let's just drop the year so we don't have to keep dealing with that. We're going to group by species. We're going to mutate and we're going to keep, and we're going to get all the numeric columns. And I, you know, I don't have to use the, the, you know, not year or whatever. Uh, I don't have to use the not year selector because I dropped the column at the beginning. Um, let's call the z-score, um, sorry, I'm just closing up parentheses to make sure I don't mess anything up. We're going to compute the z-score minus mean. And then we're going to filter based on uh, a new using a new selector called if all. And, and what this says is that, OK, again, it's similar to a cross. You're going to give it a selector to, uh, as the first argument. So here we're going to use starts with, and we're going to take all the bill columns, and we're also going to take the columns uh, that whose col uh, whose uh, value whose name ends in z-score because we would just we just want the bill z-scores, right? And then we're going to say uh, filter using. You know, basically, where the absolute value of those z of the bill z scores is greater than two, which is sort of like a, a maybe like a, a a very naive outlier filtering. Now let's just assign that to an expression here because it's getting a little getting a little unwieldy. Looks like something didn't work. Uh, let's see. Z score. Let's just make sure that mutate is working. Column Z score not found in table. That's fun. Um, let's see what's happening here. Z score. Let's see, does it work without the dictionary? Looks like maybe hmm. all right. Let's see if we can what is underscore? So that looks correct. Expert. I'm doing something wrong here. S is numeric. Oh, psh, okay. I didn't call across. Okay. Silly me. Okay. Let's do this. I feel like we had it. There it is. Okay. So, sorry about that. Forgot to call across. We've got our expression now. And now we can see we've kind of limited ourselves quite a bit, right? We There just weren't that many penguins that satisfied our predicate of the, of the bill, of both the bill length and depth being greater than, uh, you know, absolute value Z scores greater than two. So these, so as you might expect, there aren't a whole lot of outliers. Um, uh, which is which is kind of interesting. We were kind of able to express that pretty quickly and pretty concisely. And just to leave everyone with the glory, the glorious, the glory of uh, of SQL, um, we can just call ibis.show SQL on that and take a look at at what comes out. Now, this is probably going to go um, off the screen, so I'm just going to zoom zoom out a bit uh, and show that real quick see what that looks like okay we we did make it on screen uh actually we didn't 
most of it got on screen, the width of the common table expression is cut off a bit. But IBIS is kind of taking care of, of all this for you. And it, you know, if you if you want to look at, say, how many lines of SQL that is, you know, it's not a huge number of lines. Um, that said, in no universe w would I want to write this uh, by hand. Uh, that would be very not fun. So we've got uh, we've got 48 lines of, of SQL there for that that final expression. Um, whereas we did it in what do we have one two three four five six lines of Python hope you enjoyed the stream it's a little long this time but uh, there is a bunch of stuff to show so thank you if you made it all the way to the end and I will see everyone next week <laughs>